<laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I guess it's my turn. Yeah. Move on. Yeah, of yeah. course, Sam. Well, I mean, as uh, with this Corona thing, you know, I mean, I'm sure all you guys have been, you know, who uh, subscribed to all these Instagrams and, you know, from Facebook, whatever, for, uh, from different car sites and stuff. You know, we used to get like, you know, uh, information on hot new cars or future cars, all that a lot, but lately there really hasn't been any. So, mm -hmm. um, so we had to work extra hard to see what we could come up with scoops. And uh, well, at least in Japan, uh, there is gonna be a nice lineup of impressive new vehicles that are scheduling to appear uh, very soon. And hopefully well, we'll get some of those cars here too. But unfortunately, uh, the grim reality is a lot of them aren't destined for our shores. Um, especially the, the car you see here, the new Subaru Lavorg. Now, um, it's been in Japan, um, marketed in Japan, and uh, this car, it will be, pre, uh, will be available for pre-order in Japan on August 20th. So uh, that's a few days ago, six days ago, they've started taking pre-orders. And the actual vehicle will go on sale over there in September. And as you can see, it's what we here call a station wagon, a uh, word we don't like to use. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I think that's one of the reasons Subaru has uh, not made it available in the U.S. But I say change the dang name of that genre to something <laughs> else like, you know, like shooting break. That sounds so much cooler, doesn't it? <laughs> or even James, what do you guys call it in your country? It's it's an estate. An estate. That estate. even sounds so rich and That's, so that sounds so better. Snobby. I love it. Station wagon just sounds so horrible. But look at this car. I mean, it, does it look like some something your you know uh, your old eighty year old grandpa with like thick coke bottle glasses would be driving? It looks like an estate, right? The Lavorg estate, yeah, <laughs> rather I than a station wagon. To be fair, well, you could almost call it the Impressa, you know, the, the you know, the WRX is, uh, estate or shooting break. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, but this is something I would totally re, uh, really consider buying, you know, if it were marketed here, because, you know, it doesn't look like your typical station wagon. You know, you got stuff where you could put your golf clubs or whatever, your recreational equipment in the back. And it drives Pretty, pretty awesome as I'll get into some of the specs. And it's an all-wheel drive as well, right? So yes, yes, of course. Do, uh, almost do, also bizarre. Yeah, so you can yeah. do anything uh, SUV. You could rally do. this thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we hear that this Lavor will hit uh, Japan's, uh, the Japanese dealerships pretty much unchanged from the version we saw at the uh, Motor Show and uh, Tokyo Motor Show. That's when, you know, this car was one of the ones that was featured quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go off on a tangent here, by guys, but what do you think about Motor Shows? You think on the yeah, other the side of this cor corona thing, our motor shirt's pretty much done. I mean, everyone's uh, doing their thing virtually now. I mean, yeah. uh, and we have so many motor shirts. I, I don't know if they'll all go away, but I mean, are we gonna see a lot of the smaller ones just disappear? You know, you wonder. Yeah, Any that's, a, that's, a, that's, you a, that's, a, that's a tough one. Cause you know I how mean, much money, you know how much money these car companies pay to, you know, for each motor show? We're talking like millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're very expensive. The booth made up. Yeah, they're yeah. really expensive. And now they're doing everything virtually. They might be thinking, hmm. Yeah, but, uh, but like, you know, we're used to going to motor shows on press days, right? And yeah, I think there's a, there's a big difference between press days and, and people days. Yeah, I mean. and the people days, you know, when they open it up to the public, I think it's a really good chance for folks to get really close. Maybe jump in the car. Jump yeah. in the car, take your time and look at the car, kind of learn more about the car. Steal a gear stick. Yeah, things you can't do at the dealership, you know. So yeah. I, I, I still point. I still want to, you know, think that there's there's a uh, uh, there's a use and there's a you know a function for motor shows. I mean, for journalists, that side I'm not really sure because you know you can you can get everything virtually, you can get all the data, you know, online. And you can wait to drive the car, you know, as a member of the press. So I'm not really sure if, you know, the, the big fanfare and the, um, you know, the, the need for the press days is, is mm -hmm. you know, is still necessary. Maybe the need, maybe press days ago, because, you know, I've, I've been living a privileged, privileged life where 
I forgot about the, you know, the public days. You, you totally forgot about the public days. Right? <laughs> you know, the life of, you know, the, the privileged life and all. But. <laughs> so, so anyways, back to the car. I mean, look at it. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this thing. It's awesome looking, I think, you know. I mean, it does not look like the soccer, you know, the soccer mom car, you know. So, no, no, no. no. Yeah. I, I can totally see, you know, an outdoorsy guy putting his mountain bike or a surfboard or whatever on top. Right. You know, you know, throwing a, you know, longboard in there or whatever. And, you know, you can do it, this thing could do anything, a, a, you know, an SUV could do. You know? Yeah. But, you know, looking at the rear, you know, you put some nice wheels. I mean, you could kind of, you know, uh, modify it to look pretty good. But yeah. anyways, uh, the Lavorg, uh, just back to the car, the Lavorg utilized the Subaru Global Platform which was introduced in 2017 on the Impreza. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the three main objectives for this new platform was to increase straight line stability, reduce wind noise or noise and vibration mm -hmm. and uh, boost ride comfort. So uh, the new Subarus in general are just, they, they just drive much better. There's none of that little vibrations and that kind of stuff. Uh, stuff that we, you know, we've seen in like past WRS STIs, which we didn't really care because that's kind of what made the car and it was yeah. really fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, under the hood, uh, we hear, we don't know yet. No one knows yet. Even though this car is coming out in September, all, none of this information has come out yet. Is, uh, But we hear there's going to be a 1.8 liter flat four, uh, maybe a 1.6 liter version. You know, they're all FAA, they're Supra's FA engines and they're mm -hmm. all the horizontally opposed engines. And uh, the the uh, the one that I think will be the popular one is a turbocharged two liter engine that should make you know right around 268 270 horsepower and about 260 pound feet of torque. Uh, they'll be coming out in three uh, at least three trim levels and the base one I think this is the base one you see here is the GT. There's one called the GTH and then there's of course the top of the line STI which is the one I think we would all. All, all opt for. So oh, they just have a, an STI version of this yes, thing. Too? Wow. Yeah. So that's why this thing is, you know, I'm, I'm just going to bring it here. I mean, geez, guys. I mean, it looks so much better than like a, a what is it, the Forest or, or, you know? Yeah. The Forest is a bit, it's not quite the most sportiest looking thing. No. I mean, this yeah. thing is awesome looking and it's totally Subaru. You know what I'm saying? It totally yeah. fits with their image. Uh, what the Lavorg will come equipped equip with in Japan, and hopefully we'll see it in some of the Subarus out here is uh, their evolved version of their eyesight safety technology and it uses a you know a dual set of color cameras you know one by the rear view mirror the other somewhere you know somewhere else you know, to anticipate danger so they function with the adaptive uh, advanced adaptive cruise control lane keep assist sway warning pre-collision braking so it has all that technology to, you know to keep you safe so you could have your 16 year old uh, son or daughter who just got their license to, you know, just drive as long as they, you know, you say, keep it slow, so, you know. And this new thing, this new um, eyesight says that there's this thing called, they have called the stereo camera. So it expands the wide angle with enhanced laser and all that. So it makes it almost, almost impossible to have a, you know, uh, have a collision. So <laughs> now the bad part of this is, uh, of course, we, we, we can't buy it here in the U.S. It's not going to be marketed. But uh, the new Lavorg is going to be expected around thirty-five thousand dollars in our dollars. So, for thirty-five thousand dollars, I think this is a pretty dang uh, awesome car, especially, you know, if you um, consider it like a an estate version of the um, of the WRX STI. So, uh, but I would love to get your your guys's oops, sorry guys, your guys's um, uh, uh, opinion on this car. And whether you think you, you would like to see a car like this here. James, go ahead. Well, I always like a, a station wagon, as they call them here. Although that no, we don't call don't, don't 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 use that word anymore. Well, I always I, I think that if it's a station wagon, then that feels it always reminds me of National Lampoon's Family Vacation, um, <laughs> the truck stuff. But the, uh, these Brits, that's what you think of American culture, don't you? Of course. Every Chase and his fam, dumb dumb family. In a station wagon. Yeah, but this, as an estate, so looks great. And if they raced it, then they could call it a bread van, and it's even better. I mean, this, I'd love to see this rally. I mean, it'd be great, the two-liter uh, WRX, but to have it as the, the racing as an estate, so it'd be called a bread van, it'd be perfect. 
I mean, with a, you know, let's say the STI version comes in at over 300 horsepower, 350 horsepower. Is this something you, you could see in your garage? Because I could totally see this thing in my garage. Definitely. I mean, I think it, it's really on point. I like the extra room in it because you can put the seat down, you can fit all the luggage in. It's very luxurious. I like it. I mean, I can't see any problems with this car whatsoever one bit. The only problem is it's not coming to the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, it'll probably be uh, marketing in the UK though, right? Cause yeah, I could see it being marketed in the UK and Australia. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So Taro, you? Yeah, um, I mean, the only thing, I, I agree with with both of you guys. I mean, especially like the SDI version. The, like the, the thing with like um, my Forerunner, I love my Forerunner, is mm -hmm. that it's sometimes it's just too high, you know, especially like for the kids, mm -hmm. some people to climb in, like right, reach right, right. reach things in the back because it's so high. It is high. Your car is high. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this will probably make it a lot more easier, you know, to get things um, in, in and, and out. out of. Yeah. Yep. Like it's a lot faster too. Yeah. Sit, sit in the back to, you know, put on uh, your, you know, put on your uh, snowboard boots or whatever. It's a lot lower. So it's probably, you know, easy on the back too. Uh, the only mm -hmm. thing is that my wife hates station wagons. It's not a station wagon. <laughs> it's an so, estate or a shooting break. My wife, my wife would not approve, but um, I, I, it's a shooting break. Just tell her it's a shooting break this, or it's an it, estate. It looks, it looks good, and you know it's functional. I mean, like I said, I mean, I could, I could, I can see myself owning this thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, none of us are because it's not marketed here. But uh, all you, any of you guys who think. Subaru should bring it here. You know, let Subaru know. Let someone know. Uh, it's, uh, you know, um, that's how, you know, we got a lot of, like, the GTR to get, you know, marketed here. There was just a, a big demand for it, you know. Yeah. My, my sister actually was asking me about this car. She's looking to... The Lavor? Yeah. She's looking to uh, buy a new car. And um, she was like, how about Subaru? It's like, and this Lavor car. So, and I told her, yeah, they're great cars. I mean, she's also looking at, like, the Forester as well. Uh, the Forester might be a little too big for her for what what she needs. But yeah, well, they're kind of too different. I mean, the Lavor is yeah. you know it's a little more performance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So. So, uh, so what's up next, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Are you in a hurry to go? Always.